Ciao ragazzi, welcome back. Uh, MotoGP Talk with Claudio Giganti uh, with Giga Racing here to talk about Portimao uh, race, MotoGP. First time MotoGP race in Portimao. Uh, you see on the back of the screen, Alex Espargo was one of the few riders that managed to uh, test uh, drive right um, at Portimao. It was really nice. Uh, he says more like a roller coaster, up and down. Uh, I'm really excited about this race um, just because we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't know which bike is going to be better than others because the track is very different. As I said, it's like a roller coaster, a lot of up and down, uh, places where the front end lifts up, probably the old bike will lift up. So we don't know what to expect and I like that. I like that there is no provision. There's no, oh, maybe this bike is going to do well or the other bike is going to be do good. So uh, we are in an uncertain situation, we don't know. And it's the last race, so everybody's gonna be out there to do the best on their ability. So let's talk a little bit about the pre-race. Uh, I got the Aprilia back here. I think uh, Attilia, I think Aprilia deserve uh, a nice applause. I, I think they made a really big step this year. And I hope to see them doing well at uh, Portimao. You guys know I'm not a big, you know, enthused fan about Alex Espargo. Uh, I think Aprilia could do better with a better rider. I heard the rumors about maybe Charles Davis. You know, I'm wearing an Aruba sweater today. Uh, Charles Davis has been with Aruba team for a long time. Not this coming year, but, you know, I really hope uh, he gets a chance to try a MotoGP bike. They're saying he's a big, big uh, uh, stature. It doesn't really suit well uh, more GP bikes, but you know what? It would be nice to see a new face um, at the track and somebody that hasn't been, you know, over talked through the years. So I really hope they give him a chance and he gets to try it. But in the meantime, um, I watched the press conference today, MotoGP press conference. These press conferences are coming really boring, guys, really flat. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're actually giving us any information. It's uh, it's kind of almost like they can't talk too much. Or they don't want to talk too much. There's too much politics in behind. And as you can see, uh, Valentino Rossi has even been invited to the last few um, press conferences. I don't know. It's because, you know, he usually speaks out uh, his opinion. And so they don't want to have a chance of him saying something that shouldn't be said. And I feel like um, on the press conference, Carl Clacho, everybody was saying that he actually speaks out what he what he means. But when he was asked a question about what he think about the new generation of the writers, you know what? He didn't really answer the question. I was, uh, I don't know, concerned or, um, no, I don't know how to express my uh, feelings about it. He said that now it will be on Miller. To actually speaks out his uh, opinion. Uh, I heard last Friday, and I, I just didn't want to talk about it before, that uh, uh, he and Miller had the you know the gut to actually say that he didn't really believe uh, on the Yannone situation that uh, it was actually um, a contamination of food that he eat at a restaurant. That's why. Uh, he tested positive uh, for doping. Um, I don't know Miller. I, I don't know what does he know about it. If he read, you know, all the paperwork and everything that was filed, I, I think people should actually educate themselves before they actually make a judgment that harsh and uh, without without knowing about it. Okay, I don't know about it, so I don't talk much about it. I go by what I hear, by him stating. Oh, he doesn't believe that, you know, Yannone uh, took uh, um, the, the, the uh, you know, the contamination it wasn't related to food that he ate at a restaurant. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, between between writers, uh, I find that uh, it wasn't necessary to say that. So uh, saying that he speaks his uh, opinion out, I don't really think he does, uh, especially because this year Ducati, let's put it out there, like, you know, Dovizioso really said how it was and, and what the issues were, and Miller didn't mention anything. Yes, 
military fight for victory last race. He managed to get bike working. I don't know how he did it. Uh, he did somehow because all the other riders were, were far back. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, some people ask me about uh, Johan Mir and his championship. How come I didn't make a video about him winning the championship? You know, I don't have a great opinion about this championship this year. Uh, Johan Mir, I haven't seen him fighting with other riders uh, to the end of the race. Like, for instance, like last weekend. So it's, it's hard to judge somebody that won one race uh, that he led only like 11 laps uh, through the entire year and he won a championship. He played it safe, like I said, after the race on my, on my interview. Uh, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to say he, he's a good champion, he's a bad champion because in all fairness, I haven't seen much out of him. So it's hard for me to judge based on what we see those, this year. This year was a very um, particular season due to the number one, the COVID, and number two, the new construction of tires with the Michelin. Going back to Portimao, let's talk a little bit about tires um, and uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. They're going to be having an extended uh, practice time. It's going to be two hours and 20 minutes total tomorrow. And they're giving the extra time just because most of the riders haven't ridden there uh, a MotoGP bike. Yes, they have tested there with the Superbike bikes, but it's different behavior and different machines. So we're going to see how that's going to go tomorrow. Um, you guys keep you know, listening to me talking about Michelin. Okay? They are riding four actually different fronts and four different rear. To me, it's unnecessary because you know, in the time they have given, on a new truck, it's hard to try four different tires, four different front, four different rear. They don't have the time to check to, to, to check those tires, to try those tires, and to set, you know, different different setting for different tires. So uh, I rather see Michelin bringing two tires per race rather than bringing three to four tires because the problem with Michelin tires is between soft, medium, and hard. It's so close, the difference is minimal. There is not like a big difference in between, so it makes it really hard to set up the bike for those tires because the difference between tires is very minimal. Minimal. So there is no much difference, so very hard to set up. Now they're bringing an extra tires. So, and I feel like they're doing it just to show off how good they are and how good they can make tires, and now they're gonna bring an extra tire I don't know, I think it's working against uh, their interest and the rider's interest, but we'll see it tomorrow. Prediction for tomorrow, I really, really guys hope to see Valentino Rossi back up front. I'm saying that because nobody have been there before and I think experience is going to make a big difference uh, tomorrow as far as the lap time goes. So I wouldn't be surprised if I see him. Uh, at the top of the time sheet or on the top spots tomorrow uh, at least for tomorrow Friday and hopefully they can make the tire work they're saying about uh, the tires the tracks that have more grip that the asphalt is grippy uh, Yamaha can perform better tracks that they're less grippy Yamaha has a hard time performing but you know what Yes, they said that Yamaha won, which is a fact, that Yamaha won most uh, races this year. Uh, so the bike somehow is good. It just is hard to set it up, to set it right. So, because I think even though it's the slowest bike uh, on, on MotoGP grid uh, these days, I think can perform very well. And Morbidelli proved it yesterday, sorry, last weekend. So let's hope to see again Morbidelli up front, like I always do, like. And uh, let's see if you can see Valentino Rossi back up front a little bit as well. Suzuki, big question mark. Um, two run, young riders, I don't know how they're going to do with a track like this. This is a challenging track, guys. Up and down, blind corners, uh, tight corners. It's going to be interesting tomorrow, guys. Don't miss out the practice. 
and don't miss out on my review for the practice tomorrow night because we're gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna talk about what I see tomorrow. And uh, thank you again for watching uh, MotoGP Talk with Claudio Gigante and Giga Racing. Ciao, a domani.